Okay, so assalamu alaikum. Today I'm going to be talking about the differential diagnosis of abdominal pain and this is going to be presented by Amal of Medicine on the 5th of March of the year 2013. Before starting to talk about the differential diagnosis of different abdominal pain, I'd like to remind you of the nine regions of the abdomen. To start with, we're going to have the right hypochondriac region, then the epigastric region, after that is the left hypochondriac region. Below comes the right lumbar region, the umbilical region, and the left lumbar region. Then the right iliac region, the hypogastric region, and the left iliac region. Now, I found this picture online that basically summarizes the differential diagnosis of different abdominal pains regarding to the quadrants. So I'm going to go through them quickly and then give you a way, a very simple way of how to memorize the different regions and the different causes of pain in every single region. So we're going to start with the right hypochondric region. It's going to have gallstones because normally the gallbladder is going to be present in this area. You're going to have stomach ulcers and pancreatitis because the head of the pancreas is in this area. Here you're going to have anatomically the esophagus and the stomach. Therefore, stomach ulcers are common to be present as pain in this area, which is the epigastric region and the heartburn or indigestion because as we know that as long as the esophagus and the stomach both of them lie anatomically in this region then whenever there's going to be gastric reflux of acids into the esophagus it's going to be present as heartburn in this area pancreatitis because the pancreas is present in this area and epigastric hernia because this is going to be called the epigastric region left hypochondric region the patient is going to be present with stomach ulcers and duodenal ulcers because uh, uh, here is usually a part of the stomach is present, biliary colic and pancreatitis because here the tail of the pancreas is present. Below that comes the right lumbar region. We have kidney stones because at the posterior part we're going to have the right kidney. We're going to have also the ascending colon and the small intestine in this area, which is the right lumbar region. Therefore, constipation is going to be um, a, co a complaint of pain in this area sometimes. We might have lumbar hernia because this is the lumbar region, and we might have urine infection. In this area, we're going to have pancreatitis, stomach ulcers, inflammatory bowel, and small bowel disease, and umbilical hernia because this is the area where the umbilics, uh, umbilics umbilicus is but I'd like to remember to remind you that we're going to have early appendicitis in this area the patient who has early appendicitis is going to be present with pain around the umbilical region but that doesn't mean that the appendix lies here which is the umbilical region no, the appendix lie in this region, which is the light iliac region. But usually early appendicitis pain is going to be present with pain around the umbilicus. Then comes, uh, we come to the left lumbar region. We're going to have kidney stones because the left kidney is present here. Diverticular disease because this is the area where we're going to have descending colon and small intestine. Constipation and inflammatory bowel disease. Proceeding downward to the right iliac region, as we already mentioned, the appendix is going to lie in this region, therefore the patient with appendicitis in a later stage might present with pain in this region. Constipation, pelvic pain, which is most probably due to gynecological reasons, especially in women, because in this area we're going to find the right ovary and the right fallopian tube, and it might be Grohn's pain because of inguinal hernia. Um, after that, we're going to come to this area, which is the hypogastric region. In this area, we're going to have the urinary bladder and the ureters and the sigmoid colon, the rectum, and also the fallopian tubes um, are going to start there to emerge from this area, as well as the uterus, which is going to be lying in this area. Therefore, we can conclu conclude, because we have the sigmoid colon and the rectum, we might have diverticular diseases. Um, urine infection can happen because here we're going to have the, gut, the urinary bladder and the ureters. On the other hand, pelvic pain, which is due to gynecological reasons, might also happen because we have the uterus here together with the fallopian tubes. 
In this area, we're also going to have diverticular diseases, um, pelvic pain, and Crohn's pain. Now, I know that all these diseases that I already mentioned and the pain reasons and everything might seem a bit confusing and might be a bit hard to learn, even if you actually know the anatomical position of every single uh, structure, sometimes the pain might be referred to other pain. Therefore, I concluded a very easy way to learn the, the different differential diagnosis of the abdominal pain according to the quadrants. Now, this scheme basically is going to be um, representing the quadrants as I represented them in the first slide of mine. This is going to be the right region and this is going to be the left region. So this is the right hypochondric region, epigastric region, left hypochondric region, right lumbar region, umbilical region, and left lumbar region. And here we're going to have the right iliac region, the hypogastric region, and the left iliac region. So, to start with, the right hypochondric region is going to be presented with a word called GUS. What does GUS stand for? The G in the GUS is going to stand for gallstones, and the U-S is going to stand for ulcers in the stomach. The epigastric region is going to have a hug in it, and it's going to be presented as, because it's the second region we're going to be talking about, so the H is going to be presented in two uh, differential diagnoses. The first one is the heartburn, and the second one is the epigastric hernia. So the second one is hernia and the epigastrium because it's called the epigastric region. The U is going to stand for stomach ulcers, and the G is going to stand for gallstones. After that, the left hypochondric region is going to be um, symbol 2 as buds. Bud is going to stand for biliary colic, then ulcers in the duodenum and the stomach. Now, do you notice that we forgot something really important because we mentioned that the head of the pancreas is going to be here, the pancreas is going to be here, and the tail of the pancreas is going to be in this region. Therefore, we're going to have to add three Ps in all these regions. To learn it in an easy way, we're going to say that this region is going to be symbolized by a, by a sentence called Gus hugs buds. So Gus, who's a guy, is going to hug his buds together with three bees in all the region because we're going to have a pancreas. Easy, right? Okay, going to or proceeding to the next region, we're going to have chess, which is a name of a guy. C is going to stand for constipation, H is going to stand for hernia, and because we are in the lumbar region, so the hernia is going to be a lumbar hernia. I is going to stand for infection in the urine, and S is going to stand for stones. Where the stones are going to be? We're already in the right lumbar region, so the sto stones are most probably to be in the kidney. After that, we're going to have a word called abuse, which is going to represent the umbilical region. In abuse, A is going to stand for appendicitis, which we have already discussed. B is going to stand for inflammatory bowel disease. And U is going to stand for ulcers. Where are the ulcers? They are in the stomach. That's why we have an S after the U. And the E here is to remind you that the appendicitis course, when it's going to present in this pain, is going to be early. And the left lumbar region is going to be presented as a disc. And the desk is going to stand for diverticular disease, I is for inflammatory bowel disease, S is going to be um, S is going to be for the stones that are going to be in the kidney, and C is going to be for constipation. Okay, so the sentence here is that Chris, which is a guy, has abused his disc or misused his disc. And you have to remember that here we had three P's, here we only have one P which is going to be in the umbilical region because pancreatitis can be represented as pain in this region. So the sentence for the second part is Chris abused disc. The last part we're going to be talking about is this part. To start with the right iliac region, in the right iliac region we are going to have a cap. What would CAP stand for? C is going to stand for constipation. A is going to stand for appendicitis because the appendix is usually present in this region. And the P is going to stand for the pelvic pain, which we already discussed could be due to gynecological reasons because the right fallopian tube and the right ovary is going to present, be present in this region. But we forgot one thing, which is 
the inguinal hernia, which might be present as Crohn's pain. So it's cap and I. Cap is my friend and it's me. So it's cap and I. The next region is going to be the hypogastric region and it's going to be presented with a paid. The verb paid. P is going to be standing for pelvic pain, which we already talked about. And the A is going to be standing for appendicitis. The I is going to be standing for inflammatory disease. And the D is going to be standing for the diverticular disease, which we said is normal because we have the sigmoid colon and the rectum in this region. The last region we're going to be talking about is the left iliac region. But before I forgot, something about the hypogastric region you have to keep in mind that sometimes the urine infection is going to be present in pain in the hypogastric region because we're going to have our urinary bladder and ureters in this region. So it's uh, paid you. Then the last region, which is the left iliac region, which is going to be presented as DIP, dip. D is going to stand for diverticular disease, I is going to stand for inguinal hernia, which is going to be presented as Crohn's pain, and pelvic um, pain, which is going to be presented due to gynecological problems, as I already mentioned. So what's the sentence for the last part? It's cap and I paid you dip. So we put a dip for cap, and it's me and cap who paid for it. So the three sentences that are going to help us to learn the differential diagnosis of different abdominal pains are going to be Gus hug buds, chis abuse disc, and cap and eye paid you and dip. I know that it might seem a bit funny at first, but trust me, it's really helpful if you're trying to um, learn the differential diagnosis of abdominal pains for the first time. And then after that, you could relate it really easily because after that, with uh, practice, you could learn these abdominal um, differential diagnosis of different abdominal pains in a more easy way. So I summarized what I already said in these three slides. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope you found it really informative and I hope it helped you a lot. If you had any questions, feedbacks or corrections to anything I said or if you would like to have to tell me your comments regarding my video, please contact me at amalofmedicine at gmail.com. Thank you very much and have a very nice day and assalamu alaikum.